Good morning. It's lovely to be with you, and can I just bring you uh, greetings from St. John's, uh, the, the crew that meet down there. Um, they send you their love on this beautiful sunny morning. And there isn't roadworks in the middle of Disley, so uh, I haven't had to shoot over the hills to get here. But it's all just perfectly timed. Um, so that's always a good start. We're in the Easter season, um, so we're still going to use Easter liturgies. Now, Easter season runs from Easter through till Pentecost. Uh, where the church just really does dig into remembering that Jesus is risen from the dead, that death has been defeated. And uh, that that's, um, so therefore we're going to use the Easter acclamations as the way to start the service and um, they will echo through the opening part of the service. So, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen. As we look through today's service, uh, we're going to be focusing again on Isaiah, and uh, it's the passage that says, uh, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, and, um, and invites us into that journey with God. And so as we look to that passage, the, the next hymn that we're going to have really did echo there. But for me, um, part of the message of today actually is one I really want God to be saying. This is the message I want God to be saying. I think he also is saying it, but this is the message... I really want to hear God saying to the church of England as a whole, to us as a nation. Uh, so do listen for that as we look to hear the news that God is coming near.
season, and we're going to start off with the um, Easter praise um, liturgy. It does echo round the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Living God, we thank you for this day of praise and celebration. Today is a day that changes everything. And as we journey through Easter season, it's probably worth reminding you of the story I think I've shared with you about when I was a curate. And I was a curate in Shrewsbury, and one of the people left the church. And he left the church to go to the Greek Orthodox Church, which is always really sad. But of all things, because he was one of the uh, well-known counsellors in Shrewsbury, he put an article, a full uh, back page spread article, in the, I think it was the back page anyway, in the local newspaper, uh, where the, 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 the editor thought there was news here. Uh, as to why he moved to a Greek Orthodox Church in Greek. And he said, oh, well, it's these, uh, these evangelical Anglicans. They're always doing this confession thing. It's all about sin, sin, sin. And um, myself and the train over to come and had to sit down and think about how we did we respond to this, because the newspaper was certainly approaching him and could potentially approach a curate. And uh, we, 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 had to, we thought about it we said, it's not about sin, sin, sin. The message of Good Friday and Easter Sunday is that on Good Friday Jesus takes our sins and offers us forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And Easter Sunday he offers us life, life, life. And through what he's done in this Easter season, in Good Friday through to Easter Sunday, we're offered new hope, new life, forgiveness and a fresh beginning. And so we come to our time of confession. Jesus Christ, risen Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess our weakness and unbelief. Like Mary at the tomb. Like the disciples behind locked doors. Like Thomas in the upper room. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. sort of prayer that helps to collect our thoughts today is written for us. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect through Jesus Christ our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's good news that everything is restarting again. And first of all, we have weddings starting to be booked. And so uh, Terry and Rachel stand up. And Tom and Megan stand up. So these are two wedding couples, one getting married here, one getting married elsewhere. Um, so I publish the balance of marriage between Terry Robert Johnson and Rachel Elizabeth Thompson, both of this parish, and between Tom William Connell and Megan Pitchers, also both of this parish. These are all for the first time of asking. If anybody knows of any reason in law why these persons may not marry, they're to declare it now. So let's pray for them. 
Father, we thank you for Terry and Rachel and for Tom and Megan and the love that is growing between them and is going to flourish into marriage. We pray your blessing on them between now and their marriage day, that they will know you close in every breath of their lives and that your love is binding them together. Amen. Please sit. Sorry, when I invited you to come, I didn't say I was going to embarrass you, but I did just say that. I should, have, I should have asked your permission beforehand. I'm sorry. These, these are regulars, so it doesn't matter if I embarrass them. <clears throat> um, we are um, coming up towards ascension, and uh, ascension is that great sort of, in that sense, for fulfillment of the Daniel prophecy of one like the Son of Man entering heaven and taking rule and reign. Um, and uh, as we look, look to that, that then starts the countdown into Pentecost, and the church. Um, in, the, in the first century, in the first uh, time that that happened, dedicated itself to prayer, to waiting for God to grow his kingdom, to, to inspire them, to, to sort of launch them into the world. And one of the things that we're invited to do is to do that ourselves. And uh, in particular, one of the main focuses of Thy Kingdom Come, which is what it's called year on year, is that you focus on praying for a number of people by name each day, uh, that they will come to know Jesus. And uh, the suggestion is five. I'll let you off with three. Um, but there's also suggestions on ways to pray, that are, to pray on the Thy Kingdom Come website. I'm highlighting two this year, and they're in the e-bulletin, and all of you should know about the e-bulletin and be able to get it. You can get a link to it uh, off our Facebook page, Disney Parish Churches, um, and then you can sign up yourself. But um, on that, there's one for families, and so um, if you got, uh, if that's going to be useful to you with grandkids or to pass on to family, then that's that's all good. Um, but then the other one is a prayer journal. Now I must confess that in terms of my prayer life, I've always found journaling as a, as a discipline. The disciplines that we have are there to help us to flourish. Um, journaling is always one that I've found hard. Um, I won't go into the, some of the details, uh, that's more for a discussion with my spiritual director than, than now, but I will be trying the discipline of doing journaling again this year. See if this way, uh, from Stephen Cottrell, the new Archbishop of York, um, will help me. And um, you can, there's a link on the e uh for this and for the families one. If you want to find other resources, there's lots available on the Thy Kingdom Come website. But it's just an invite for those 10 days to try stepping up your prayer life a little bit, and in particular praying uh, for God's kingdom to come. Uh, in this world, and uh, making everything right and new, and we will think a bit about that as we go later on. And then finally, we're coming up towards the APCM. Um, it's a little bit later than usual because they've changed the rules and allowed you to be a little bit later than usual, uh, which means we can move it out of the way of being around Easter. And the annual general meeting is for anybody that can, can come who lives in the parish or is on the electoral roll. Well, I think anybody can come anyway, but those, those two in various ways can vote. Um, at various, um, if you live in the parish, but not... Um, anyway, um, electoral roll and, uh, and living in the parish. And uh, it's when we elect our church wardens and our PCC members um, that then act as the part of the, the government and guidance of the church. And so uh, do pray, thank God for all those that have served during the time we've been uh, during lockdown. And uh, some of those are stepping back this time, they may be standing for election and others may want to stand. But do pray if God's guiding you to be part of that governance in, in the church, part of that leadership and, uh, and shaping of what we do as a parish. And certainly pray that the right people are elected this year. Uh, to guide us in the journey forward. So that's uh, um, open for you, and in that sense, the Church of England is actually very democratic um, and are in our governance. I don't think there's any other notices I've been asked to give. If anybody has asked me to give any other notices, then just remind me because I've forgotten. No, obviously not. That's brilliant. Uh, so let's move on to the first of our readings, and this is the reading that I will be focusing on when it comes to the sermon. The first reading is from uh, the book of Isaiah, 
chapter 51, starting at verse 12 and running through to chapter 52, verse 12. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that who are you that fear mortal men, the sons of men, who are but dross, that you forget the Lord your Maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, that you live in constant terror every day, because of the right wrath of the oppressor, who is bent on destruction. For where is the wrath of the oppressor? The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. For I am the Lord your God, who churns up the sea so that its waves roar. The Almighty, the Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in, his mouth, in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who led the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. Awake, awake, rise up, O Jerusalem. You who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath, you who have drained its dregs, the goblet that makes men stagger. Of all the sons she bore, there, is, there was none to guide her. Of all the sons she brought up, there was none to take her by the hand. These double calamities have come upon you. Who can comfort you? Ruin and destruction, famine and sword. Who can console you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of, of every street, like antelope caught in a net. They're filled with the wrath of the Lord and the rebuke of your God. Therefore, hear this, you afflicted one made drunk but not with wine. This is what your sovereign Lord says. Your God, who defends his people, see, I've taken out of your hand the cup that made you stagger. From that cup, the goblet of my wrath, you will never drink again. I will put it into the hands of your tormentors, who said to you, fall prostrate, that we may walk over you. And, made, and you made your back like the ground, like a street, to be walked over. Awake, awake, O Zion. Clothe, clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor. O Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Shake off your dust. Rise up. Sit enthroned, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on, on your neck. O captive daughter of Zion. For this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. At first my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately Assyria has oppressed them. And now what do I have here? Declares the Lord. For my people have been taken away for nothing. And those who rule them mock, declares the Lord. And all day long my name is constantly blasphemed. Therefore my people will know my name. Therefore it is in that day that they will know that it is I who, who foretold it. Yes, it is I. How beautiful are the mountains, in the, on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, you watchmen, lift up your, their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has confronted has comforted his people, and he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Come out from it and be pure, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. 
but it is but you will not leave in haste or go in flight for the Lord will be with you the God of Israel will be your near your rear guard this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God And now the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. reading is taken from John chapter 15 verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, speak to us again through your Spirit, that we may be drawn into the full life of Jesus. Amen. Please sit. Yesterday was a funny old day, and not quite the success I'd wanted it to be. The story starts actually months ago, when during lockdown, um, I decided I'd do some gardening in the churchyard. We'd been told by the tree surgeon that uh, we were letting too many saplings and letting the trees get out of hand. And then it sort of that migrated into on Saturday mornings, inviting uh, people, if they wanted to, to join me to help with that gardening. And uh, a group has sort of emerged around that that had come on the first Saturday of the month uh, to do that. And we've tackled a lot of the saplings um, that corner of the uh, church uh, yard area. Uh, so through the, the woody trees and up into what I've nicknamed the vicarage uh, field beyond. And also uh, a lot of the hedges around uh, gra uh, graveyard, uh, the graveyard field fall and uh, taking that back and actually exposing um, again a whole load of graves that have just been allowed to get covered and overgrown and so really good work but what we've managed to do is accrue an awful lot of branches and so last time we were meeting we were saying um, we really need to get these all, all shredded down so the idea just to well, we'll, we'll hire a shredder and, uh, and we'll do it and on Thursday I tried to pick a shredder first of all looking the very big ones are very very expensive uh, so I, I bought, so I looked at hiring a, an industrial shredder uh, to take it through that wasn't quite that big to, to, to be more moderate on the money. And uh, booked it with a, a big well-known firm, uh, thought that was okay. And then on Friday on my day off, I was looking for the confirmatory email, it didn't come through. And so I phoned the firm to say, what's going on about this? And they said, oh, we're looking at it now. And um, there isn't one, the newest one's in Shetland. <laughs> Um, we can't provide it for you. I said, well, that's, uh, that's a bit of a pity to let me book it online. If well, you shouldn't have booked it online. At which point I must say I saw a little bit of red. At which I said, if I shouldn't have booked it online, then you should put online that you should book it online. Um, will I get the money back? Because I, want, I haven't got that much spare cash. I've got to hire something. I've said we're going to do this tomorrow. 
Um, well, well, it will come back, but it won't be immediately. It'll have to be processed. So then we booked with another firm, and they, their customer service, I must say, was brilliant. And uh, they got back to us, and they phoned up, and they checked that it was all branches, because um, the unless you, if, if you're trying to do new bounces, so you do need the really expensive ones, but uh, so that, that was all fine. Uh, then went then yesterday morning to go and get it, got back just in time at 9.30 for the starting of the gardening time. Brilliant, got it out, got it set up, managed to work out how it worked, started putting branches through, and we, we realised quite quickly that the blade was blunt. So we loaded it back into the car driver, back up to Ashton and lap to change it. Um, get to there, they, they look at it, go, well, uh, can you sharpen the blade? They go, well, we used to be able to, but now we have to send it off to a company to sharpen the blade. But we have got this one other one in that's electric. They didn't quite mention to me that it only takes half the, the branches of half the size of the other one. Um, so I said, well, that'll do, we'll take it back, we'll get them, we'll get them chopped. Got that back for about midday, which is when we finish on 9.30 till 12 o'clock over there. But uh, uh, Graham stayed on with me, we started trying to shred through there. And uh, after a bit of a hoo-ha trying to find a plug that would take that sort of ampage through um, to, to get it all connected up by electrics, uh, we got it working. Um, but and there is quite a nice little pile of chipped wood up there. But working till four o'clock, um, it's probably only an eighth of the, of the amount we had to do. And so it just didn't work. And I have got plans for other ways to try and approach the problem. Um, and a big thank you to all the gardening teams that have been doing an absolutely amazing job. You can see the piles of branches that we've managed to accrue if you take a walk, walk up there. And we will get them dealt with and it will all look a lot better. And actually people are commenting being cared for. Uh, the church and church, the churchyard is looking better. It is a better, better witness to our community. But overall you probably feel a bit deflated. Because actually we're used to in the West, we've been conditioned to have um, stories and narratives that finish on success. And actually, to lay your best plans and to struggle against all the odds and it's still to be a failure is something we absolutely hate. And I hate it as much as you. And if I'd have got halfway through and I could have finished off by working till 8 o'clock at night, I would have carried on putting them through till 8 o'clock just to get to that success point. But couldn't do it. Hold on to that emotion. Because we're going to talk about Israel and Jerusalem. Uh, during that Isaiah period of time. The story we're doing from Isaiah is part of looking this year at the book of Isaiah. We've, uh, just for those who are less familiar with the background of these sermons, um, Isaiah started off in 1 to 40, where it's speaking into a time uh, when um, Assyria was the great oppressor and they got right to the doorsteps of Jerusalem and then finishes in sort of chapter 39 uh, with this warning about Babylon. And then we get this section, 40 to 55, and where it does mention uh, saints, it mentions Babylon, so it seems to have jumped about 100 years to be speaking into the situation uh, with Babylon. And Babylon came and succeeded where Assyria failed. They tore down the walls of Jerusalem. They slaughtered and just completely annihilated the army. Uh, the king tried to escape and uh, was caught, and uh, they killed a lot of the top leaders. They took all of the brightest and best away with them. If you think about the books of Daniel, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego taken into civil service, that's what they did with all the brightest and best. They creamed off um, the elite of society, left the society leaderless, put in their overlords to make sure that they didn't rise up. And so they ended up, in that sense, completely bowed down. They were defeated. They had their elites taken away from them. They were an underfunded sub-region that had to pay taxes, and they weren't allowed to re-establish themselves properly. They lived under the governments of others who brought their propaganda with them. I don't know if you could imagine something like that in modern day, but when people talk about the North-South divide and that all the wealthy jobs are in London and everybody has to migrate there and it leaves a poorer North, um, it's that times 10 or 100, one would guess. And they were totally um, at a loss. 
In fact, um, the main story in the Bible for what's happening for the people of Israel is carried by the exiles. The exiles write the beautiful psalm, by the rivers of Babylon, there we wept when we remembered Zion. The exiles have Daniel with Shadrach, Mishnah, and Abednego. Later, the exiles have Ezra and Nehemiah, who would be the ones that, when they realize everything's not well in Jerusalem, come back and rebuild uh, the walls. The exiles are the ones that seem to be most of what Isaiah 40 to 55 is talking to, with the promise that they will be restored and brought back from exile. And the ones that are left are the ones that are left at home. It reminds me of people I've talked to, because obviously we do fostering adoption, but actually it's been part of my family heritage, including my uncle was adopted. And people I've talked to who've been adopted when they found their family have at times said to them, you were the lucky ones being adopted, we were left in the situation that was too poor for you to stay in, and we were left in that. Uh, and, and that is how Jerusalem felt. And this message today is to Jerusalem, saying that you've had, and one translation, I think it's translated literally, the shaking cup, the cup that's made you shake. You've had the cup of wrath, and now that's been taken from you, and we're going to be lifting you up. That you get lifted. And the, the days in which you felt completely abandoned and left behind will be turned round and instead good news will be coming to you. And perhaps you can look at things like um, the decline of the church over the last hundred years in the West, which is not mirrored by around the rest of the world. But look at that and go, oh, that's the message that I long to hear. As a curate, well before a curate, in theological college, um, Bob Jackson uh, was writing his books on, on church statistics, but also the statistics about where there was growth and writing that. Steve Cottrell, who's now the Archbishop, was involved in Springboard, uh, teaching about how to do church growth against the tide of a declining church. And slowly but slowly, the rate of decline seems to be slowing and there are opportunities for bringing it round to growth. And I think that it might be that God is saying in all the turnaround uh, that's happening here in terms of COVID and the way that's making people look at views, that that could be the sign of things changing because the message that came to Israel when they were under Babylonian oppression would have been this one. That Persia has defeated Babylon and now your oppressor is dealt with. And it would ultimately be the Persians that allow the exiles to return, allow Ezra and Nehemiah to come back and rebuild the temple and rebuild the city walls and re-establish them. It would take a good period of time, but this is the turning point where things start to change. And in that turning point, um, there's three points in the latter part that I just want to hook into briefly and then hopefully look at what that perhaps means for us. And the first of those is how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Now on Friday I went for a 22 kilometre run. It wasn't quite the run I'd intended to do. I'd intended to do a lot flatter run, but as I was running up the tram lines uh, past about Chinley, they closed part of the tram tramway, the tram lines, uh, tramway, whatever they call it there. Um, so I had to run down to Budsworth and then I ran over the tops. I think it's, it's Silk Road or whatever that goes over, straight up and down over the top to Whaley, and then over the tops up to the boat stones, um, and then back down here. And I got back home, and my wife did not say to me, Oh, how beautiful of your feet. Come on, let me massage them. <laughs> Uh, and the reality, when the messenger would have walked, probably, especially if it was an exile messenger part of the communication that happened between the exiles in Jerusalem, we know that was happening in Ezra, that there was communication between the communities, they would have probably been fairly poor, so it would have probably been on foot that they walked from Iraq, up the Euphrates, towards Syria, um, probably somewhere around the mountain regions there where the, where the, where the rivers hit uh, into Syria and then dropping down from Syria, Lebanon and into um, Israel in terms of our modern map. That would be the journey that these feet 
would have done. It would have been on dry and dusty roads. It would have been on roads that uh, probably, uh, especially as dry as that area is, the main form of moisture was the moisture produced by the animals that travelled along them. And so added in with the dust uh, would have been other stuff. And they may not have been rich enough for sandals, they may have walked barefoot. And if they were rich enough, it would have been sandals. So their feet would not have been beautiful. But what made their feet beautiful was the message that they carried. All of you, most of you, some of you know Nicky, who's our seven-year-old uh, adopted son, and he's got a brain injury, and so that creates problems for his gross motor, motor skills and his fine motor skills, and uh, numbers of other problems as well. Uh, and on my wall, on my, on our, on our fridge door, there is um, something that Nicky's written, and it's there not because it's beautiful, though it's beautiful to me. And it just says, I love, um, I love you, Dad. Uh, Dad, 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 I love you. I think. And uh, it's written in quite small letters, but everything's spelled correctly. And it's spaced out. And to anybody else, to every parent that's ever had a picture on their fridge wall, they're not beautiful. But they are beautiful at the same time. And that's this messenger carrying the message that Darius and the Persians have defeated Babylon and liberation is coming. And for us, as that message takes more layers of meaning in the Bible, we can't help but think about how beautiful are the feet that bring good news, that sin is defeated, death is defeated, and we are offered forgiveness and hope. And those feet, as you can just about make out the crucifixion scene there, are pierced by nails and covered in their own blood. As Jesus' his beautiful, beautiful feet are covered in gore, but bring a message to us that God's forgiveness and God's life is for each of us. And from this message of good news, then it flows on to uh, what's expected from Jerusalem. And ye watchmen, shout out, proclaim that there's good news. Sing it, to, sort of make it known in your community. Let others hear the good news of God. And then the message that they've got to sanctify and purify themselves. And as we told the earlier story about this community, they had been left leaderless and with all their potential leaders taken away from them. And they had been then governed by foreign nationals who'd come in with the propaganda from overseas and they had potentially taken on board some of this other world view. And they needed to cleanse themselves of that and get themselves refocused on God again. And that makes sense. But what does that mean in our modern life? Well, for us, our world view is not that we are part of the super state of Babylon and we've been taking on their propaganda. Our worldview is to do with commercialism and especially later commercialism and uh, modernity. And it's not all bad. But one of the um, messages that I saw on in, in, a, in a, a shopping centre in Durham was admire, aspire, acquire. And it's not all bad. It's, there's nothing wrong with admiring something. But actually, seven-year-old daughter Maria is a little bit insecure, a little bit aware that her skin is a little bit different to everybody else's in Disney, and keeps on saying, oh, so-and-so is beautiful, I, therefore I'm not beautiful. And when admiring something else is something that diminishes our own soul, um, we know there's numerous articles in the papers about this and body image and all the rest of it. 
uh, admiring somebody else's car and thinking, oh, I'm a failure because I'm not there. I've not got that car. It happens in church circles. I could admire my brother-in-law, who's a Methodist minister. He's uh, two, three years younger than me. And he's the principal of Cliff College, Bible College. Does that diminish me? And the biblical answer is, no, that doesn't diminish you. Celebrate their, their successes, but that doesn't diminish you. But all too often in materialism, the fact that we don't have diminishes who we sense we are. Ad uh, ad admire, aspire. Then you've got to get it. You've got to aspire to that. There's nothing wrong with aspiring. But rather than aspiring to climb a ladder, find we're at the top and nowhere else to go, and we don't want to be there, what God calls us to is to aspire to be everything God made us to be. And that may be that we're called not to climb, but to care for the sick and the vulnerable. And that's the shape that God's made for us. And so often in our society, what we're told what we have to aspire to, and we don't realise that God actually calls us to aspire to be like Jesus and shaped the way he's made us individually to be. And that we find true freedom when we find that. And acquire that we've got to get more in. But how often uh, do you get somebody that's mega rich? Freddie Mercury making comments about he still hasn't found what he's looking for. He still hasn't found what would give his life meaning. And that comes up time and time again in people who've got their what seem to have everything, but then commit suicide or talk about their struggles with depression as it doesn't give them what they want. Whereas actually what we're called to acquire is a relationship with God, of love with God, and a relationship of love with each other. And so, I'm not saying that materialism and the modern world is all bad. But it may have tinted glasses that, to echo what God was saying to Babylon, perhaps echoes to us. And sometimes we need to take those glasses off and take a fresh look at the world and go, am I actually in the right place doing the right thing? Where should I be? Do I want to buy into that? And one of the strange things is, and I had a conversation with somebody again this week, it's happened a number of times, and this person um, actually described themselves as a Christian atheist later on in the conversation. I hadn't thought they were a Christian at all, but um, a Christian agnostic, sorry. Um, but he said, um, going through lockdown and having to be furloughed and all the rest of it, and realising that I've got my mortgage paid off, I'm not going to go back to working full time anymore. I don't want to be on that rat race. I uh, feel like I'm on the, rat, the, 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 sort of on the hamster wheel, just going round. There's something else that life's worth. And that's why I think there's a change coming where we're starting to question some of modernity, some of um, materialism, and say, actually, it doesn't bring us fulfillment. But the good news for us in Christ is that in Christ we do find fulfillment as we find we're love with God and love with each other and community. And so we can work our way back through. Therefore, we are called to be watchmen on the city walls, looking for the good and the signs of good things that are happening and calling out when we see something good. And it may be something good in church, and it may be that once in a while the vicar's uh, midweek uh, thoughts hit the button and you want to like it and you want to repost it and you want to say something about how it's, it's spoken to you. But it may also be good things that we see out there in the world, and naming the good, and lifting people up, with watching out for the good news that's coming. And maybe we're all so called to be good news bearers to others. That it's our feet that are the beautiful feet that will carry messages to somebody else when they're down and say there is hope, there is a fresh start, that God does love you, that God is holding you, that yes it has been a tough year but the year of the difficulty is passing and something new is coming and there's new flowers growing and so new things will emerge in life and bringing hope in despair and sometimes hope in despair is in the Ecclesiastic sense sitting with somebody while they're sad for as long as they're sad and weeping with those who weep but overall being those messengers who bring in 
the new as we carry it forward. And that means that for you and for me, our calling, like the calling in Jerusalem, is to be people who perhaps examine ourselves and say, where have I bought into expectations that I've got to be like the Kardashians? Well, actually, I don't want to be like that. And where can I look and see signs of hope that I can just proclaim to others and say, that's good news. It's great news that through lockdown we've still taken out to the elderly the long table lunch meals. It's great news that we have moved online and still been able to communicate into one of the local nursing homes even though nobody's been allowed in there. It's good news that we've collected food for those who needed it in Stockwood through Wellspring and have given that out. And then finally, we are called to carry that good news to others. And if you need help to carry that good news to others, there are more of the good news um, newspapers for me at the back. We have the In Touch magazine, which is due out to go out today. There are things that we can do to help you there. But I'd encourage you just to take the bravery to speak to somebody. And you'll be surprised how often they might come back to you. One of the times I used to share good news, uh, though he's died now, was with um, a, a sports massager who used to give me a massage every other week. And he'd be putting his elbow up my spine and he'd go, So, what exactly is it Christians believe about death? And I'd go, Oh, you want to talk about that now? And he'd say, Yes. <laughs> but actually, if we're brave enough to let it be known out there. And actually people are interested because they're longing for good news in their life. And that's why I said this is the message that I think that I want, I desperately want God to be saying. I think God is saying as we emerge out of this uh, that there's a beauty of good news and those feet are yours. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you uh, for Isaiah speaking nearly 3,000 years ago now, but still speaking to us today. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to examine our lives and to, to look at where other things have crept in and overlaid that we don't want to be there. But also to open our eyes that we can see the good news stories that are all around us. And to motivate us to get up onto our feet and be good news for others. Amen. if I was taking your service I'm going to preach like this in my wedding service but I don't preach this long in wedding services which Terry is really thankful for <laughs> that is actually Margaret doing your service isn't it so she might preach this long <laughs> we come to just reaffirm the faith that we have in God uh, and all the good news that's in him and part of the creed actually is almost good news, good news, good news, that God made heaven and earth, that God is the creator, that God loves us, that God sent his son. All those things are good news that we have. So please stand with me and we'll say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken by the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So please sit as we continue with our prayers. I start my prayers this morning with my verse from uh, Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for all his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Continuing with the thoughts that it's the Easter season, the responses this morning to Risen Lord, hear us, or Risen Lord, graciously hear us. Shape and colour our prayers so that they and we may mirror your image. <coughs> Reveal to us your will and grant us grace and wisdom to know our weaknesses and our strengths. Strengthen, O Lord, the leaders of your church, especially Mark, our bishop, and we hope that soon we will hear the results of the interviews for our two suffragans to help Mark as he starts his ministry in our diocese as the lockdown guidelines are beginning to ease. We give thanks for our leaders here in Disley Parish, for Stuart, our vicar, and his ministry team. We ask too that our congregations may become alike to our villages and share Christ with others, not only in what they say, but also in what they do. Grant us all grace to grow together in the practice of hallowed fellowship, that hearing your word, we may be aware in seeing the needs of others, we remember your commands, and in doing your will, we may understand, become united in your truth, and by the well-timed inspiration of your grace, reveal your glory in the world. Risen Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we ask for your blessings on the missions we support. Tear Fund, Christian Solidarity Worldwide, Church Pastoral Aid Society, Oasis, and especially Church Mission Society, remembering Peter and Patricia Wyard and their work in the DR Congo. Lord, you surely know that life in Bunia is in devastation for those trying to live life in peace. We ask for your blessings upon those whose homes have been torched and whose families have been butchered by callous rebels. Risen Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, graciously hear us. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, defender of the faith in you. Her loyalty to you and to the position she holds is an inspiration to us all. Guide her, Lord, in all she does, as she continues her life without the man she so loved. We ask for your guidance in all decisions of our government. Give them wisdom to focus on the life-threatening issues in hand, and not to let the political power struggle between parties overshadow the needs of their electorate. Help them all to distinguish between need and greed, 
and so reward the dedication of honest and skilled activities that they may honour one another and seek the common good. Risen Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of all grace, we know the needs, you know the needs of all of us before we think or ask. We give thanks for our families and friends, both near and far. Help us to be good servants to those who may need our help, and also to share in loving fellowship with, with them to, whenever they are, we are able. During these days of lockdown, we have all wearied of time spent indoors, but Lord, we have so much to be thankful for, and know we need to count our blessings for all the good things we, in this community, are able to enjoy. We know there are so many less fortunate than us, and ask not only for your help among them, but that we are able to be aware of their needs and give freely. They are our brothers and sisters in your name. Let us be vigilant in their possible needs and meet together in your love, responding to your Holy Spirit of truth. Risen Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, we bring before you those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Silently, we name those in our hearts this morning. This week, the world has suffered together as we have watched television coverage of the pandemic in India. We have seen the sad incident in Israel. We continue to ask for help for the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, who are without work, without financial support, and without vital vaccines. We think of the family and friends of Jimmy, who jumped into the Thames in an attempt to save the life of someone he will never know. In their darkest moments, grant them a sense of your hand holding theirs and of your share in, in their suffering. Grant them courage, born of Christ, hope for the future, and the knowledge of joy of, eternal, of your eternal salvation. Risen Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, graciously hear us. Creator and sustainer of all, past, present and future, hear us as we remember those who have died. In our hearts we, may, we name those known personally to us and for whose anniversary we may recall. We keep the Armstrong family in our hearts. We think of the COVID death toll in India, indeed the death toll throughout the world. We think of Israel, Palestine, and we give thanks for the life of the brave young man, now a local hero known as Jimmy. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for those lives loved and lost. Some we have known and have loved, some never known by us, but loved by you. So many different faiths too. May they all rest in peace. Risen Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Anyone who dwells in me, as I dwell in him, bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let us take those words out to our, our community. We thank you for the resurrection life of all Christian people and for the fellowship of Mary and John and all your saints, trusting in the salvation promises of Jesus, our risen Lord. We commend to your safekeeping 
ourselves and all believers in faith, in hope, and in love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. By the beautiful feet of Christ, the message comes to us that there is hope and there is forgiveness, and that there can be peace and reconciliation. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we come to communion, we're going to do it as we have been, um, with those sort of extra rules in that mean we're doing it differently um, during during this um, these restrictions. And so we'll just be doing the bread. I will do uh, at the front of church the communion prayer, which tells again the story of Jesus' death and resurrection um, and some of what it means for us and for the hope for the world. And then um, we'll share communion here at the front. I will. Um, so I'll have my mask on, I won't say institution words, any words then as I give communion, we'll do that in silence. And I invite you to sort of come up, coming up the centre aisles, out, back, and obviously joining in that sort of flow at the right point for you. And I'll probably start here at the front, coming first with Rachel and Terry, uh, Peter and Jane, and, and um, receive the communion, take it back to your place and then take your communion at, at your place. And all those that know and love God, all those that want to draw towards God are welcome to receive uh, communion as you join in uh, the story of Jesus' death and resurrection in this way. Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us by yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. On the night he was betrayed and supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So at the start we did... Um, in particular thinking in the part of the reading from Isaiah where it was about sanctification, offering ourselves to God to be made clean and ready to be used by God. But also in the reading we picked up, and it's not particularly in the NIV that we read, but it's one of the names for God, God of the Angel Armies, and that theme generally that God is on our side and God is coming and can move mountains and can uh, overcome the difficulties that we face. And so we're going to use this new song. Um, as we finish our service, just to remind ourselves that God is on our side. My strength. 
So if you want to take one and want to give it to somebody or want to have it on the side when you're doing a coffee so that they can pick it up if they want to, um, that may be just one of those things that helps you to be good news to others. But as we finish to get today, <clears throat> again, just hoping in the death and resurrection of Christ. May the truth of the resurrection inspire you with new hope. May the victory of Christ fill you with new joy. And may the reality of his presence fill you us with new faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So we are raised to new life with Christ. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Amen.